Hello, and welcome to Mike in the Morning. Today is Monday, June 15th. I'm not sure where you are, but here in northwest Arkansas, the days are getting warmer. And everyone's thinking about growing things, either in pots or in a garden. As you know, I often talk about the spiritual journey that we're on. And we can equate our journey to the steps required in growing a garden. We can take the necessary steps so that the garden of our life is abundant and successful. Well, there are three things one typically does with a garden. Weeding, sowing the seeds, and watering, right? Let's take a look at the first step, weeding. Imagine that we have an area set aside for our garden. What do we do with it? First of all, we want to set out to remove what we don't want. We remove the weeds from the plot of land that we intend to cultivate. We take away that which is undesirable. Well, we can equate this metaphorically to the negative thoughts that we often entertain about ourselves, about others, and of our world. We want to get rid of them. So we set out to remove those thoughts we no longer desire to take root in our minds. Thoughts of inadequacy, unworthiness, of being unloved. We don't want to keep those ideas anymore. They're not part of our spiritual journey and certainly not wanted in our spiritual garden. What are we left with when we finish weeding our garden? Dirt. A vast expanse of emptiness and nothing. A large, vacant plot with nothing in it to grow. The danger here is that if we don't plant what we do want, we'll find ourselves once again overgrown with those weeds. Not only must, must we take time away what we don't want, we have to plant what we do want. Now, I know this sounds absurdly simple, but that is exactly what many people fail to do when they set out to improve themselves on their spiritual journey. They focus on getting rid of what they don't want. Their mantra becomes, I don't want weeds. I don't want weeds. I don't want negative thoughts and unacceptable behavior. Too often, what we focus on becomes what we experience the most. If all of our attention is focused upon getting rid of the weeds, we won't have any time and energy left for cultivating what we do want. We have to plant something desirable in the garden if we intend to have something other than unwanted things to grow. This is where the second step comes in. Sowing the seeds. Sowing the positive spiritual seeds in our garden of our minds with the things we desire to manifest in our lives. So the first thing we need to do is choose the right seeds. What kind of garden do you want? A farmer would not plant daisies and petunias if his intent is to cultivate a vegetable garden. No reasonable person would plant radish seeds and expect watermelons to pop up. We must clarify intent of what you desire if you expect your garden to turn out the way that you intend. Now Jesus found this analogy of sowing seeds to be so important that his parable can be found in three sections of the Bible, books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now essentially, the parable of the sower goes something like this. A farmer went out to sow his seeds, and as he scattered them, some fell onto the path and were quickly eaten by birds. Other seeds fell onto the rocks where the soil was poor. And the seeds grew quickly, but had inadequate roots and did not survive. Others fell among the thorns and were choked out by the weeds. However, some of the seeds fell onto good soil and produced in great abundance. In comparison to our spiritual journey, these seeds are our positive thoughts and desires to become better human beings. Those seeds that fell on the path 
are when we have good intentions but fail to act upon them. They quickly disappear. If we want our seeds of prosperity and abundance to take root, we can't be lackadaisical about it. We can't just casually say, I want success. It's merely scattering the seeds for the birds to consume. The seeds that fall on the rocks are when we're swayed by well-meaning friends who convince us that our quest is too long or too hard. Without a firm foundation and support, our success is short-lived. And whatever grows eventually withers and dies. The weeds and thorns are those thoughts that we entertain of unworthiness, of inadequacy and failure. Now this can come from naysayers or even well-meaning friends who overpower your intentions with negativity and choke out your desires before they have a chance to take root. We have to firmly plant our seeds in fertile soil if we want our garden to grow. Now the third step in our gardening process of is, is watering. And by watering I mean that you can't just plant seeds of prosperity and abundance and then sit back and do nothing. We have to nurture those positive seeds that we planted in our minds. We must continue to be diligent in the tending of our spiritual garden with positive affirmations and the faith that we will reap what we have sown. June is the time for gardening with both flowers and vegetables and in cultivating our spiritual journey as well. I'm Mike Cleary. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.